Brown, I, I didn't really even know Ken that well. He, he was a guy that was around and was a, an appreciator of what we all did and he contributed to what we all did. And I've actually found out more about Ken after his passing than I knew before. But one of the things that I know for sure, he was a great appreciator of Charles Bukowski. So I wanted to start off tonight with um, reading this selection, this segment from uh, Ham on Rye, an early Bukowski book. And um, it says so much about friendship and about resourcefulness and about Bukowski. So uh, here it is. My father always ran the neighborhood kids away from our house. I was told not to play with them, but I walked down the street and watched them anyhow. Hey, Heine, they yelled. Why don't you go back to Germany? Somehow they had found out about my birthplace. The worst thing was that they were all about my age, and they not only hung together, but they lived in the same neighborhood. And they all went to the same Catholic school. They were tough kids. They played tackle football for hours, and almost every day a couple of them got into a fist fight. The four main guys were Chuck, Eddie, Gene, and Frank. Hey, Heine, go back to Krautland. There was no getting in with them. Then a red-headed kid moved in next door to Chuck. He went to some kind of special school. I was sitting on the curb one day when he came out of the house. He sat on the curb next to me. Hi, my name's Red. He sat there and watched the guys play football. I looked at Red. Hi, I'm Henry. How come you got a glove on your left hand, I asked. I've only got one arm, he said. The hand looks real. It's fake. It's a fake arm. Touch it. What? Touch it. It's fake. I felt it. It was hard, rock hard. How'd that happen? I was born that way. The arm's fake all the way up to the elbow. I've got to strap it on. I've got little fingers at the end of my elbow, fingernails and all, but the fingers aren't any good. You got any friends, I ask? No, me neither. Those guys won't play with you? No. I got a football, can you catch it? Straight shit, said Red. Go get it, okay. Red went back to his father's garage and came out with a football. He tossed it to me. Then he backed across his lawn. Go on, throw it. I let it go. His good arm came around and his bad arm came around and he caught it. The arm made a slight squeaking sound as he caught the football. Nice catch, I said. Now wing me one. He cocked his arm and let it fly. It came like a bullet, and I managed to hold on to it as it dug into my stomach. You're standing too close, I told him. Step back some. At last, I thought, some practice catching and throwing. It felt really good. Then I was the quarterback. I rolled back, straight-armed an invisible tackler, and let go a spiral fly. It fell short. Red ran forward, leaped, caught the ball, rolled over three or four times, and still held on to it. You're good, Red. How'd you get so good? My father taught me. We practiced a lot. Then Red walked back and let one sail. It looked to be over my head as I ran back for it. There was a hedge between Red's house and Chuck's house, and I fell into the hedge going for the ball. The ball hit the top of the hedge and bounced over. I went around to Chuck's yard to get the ball. Chuck passed the ball to me. So you got yourself a freak friend, huh, Heine? Chuck said. It was a couple of days later, and Red and I were on his front lawn passing and kicking the football. Chuck and his friends weren't around. Red and I were getting better and better. Practice, that's all it took. All a guy needed was a chance. Somebody was controlling who got a chance and who didn't. I caught one over the shoulder, whirled, and winged it back to Red, who leaped high and came down with it. Maybe someday we'll play for USC. Then I saw five boys walking down the sidewalk towards us. They weren't guys from my grammar school. They were our age and looked like trouble. Red and I kept throwing the ball, and they stood watching us. Then one of the guys stepped under the lawn, the biggest. Throw me the ball, he said to Red. Why? 
I want to see if I can catch it. I don't care if you can catch it or not. Throw me the ball. He's got one arm, I said. Leave him alone. Stay out of this monkey face. Then he looked at Red. Throw me the ball. <coughs> Go to hell, said Red. Get the ball, the big guy said to the others. They ran at us. Red turned and threw the ball on the roof of his house. The roof was slanted and the ball rolled back down but managed to stick behind a drain pipe. Then they were on us, five to two, I thought. There's no chance. I caught a fist on the temple, swung and missed. Somebody kicked me in the ass. It was a good one and burned all the way up my spine. Then I heard a cracking sound. It was almost like a rifle shot. One of them was down on the ground holding his forehead. Oh shit, my skull is crushed. I saw Red and he was standing in the center of the lawn. He was holding the hand of his fake arm with the hand of his good arm. It was like a club. <laughs> then he swung him again. There was another loud crack and another of them was down. I began to feel brave. I landed a punch right on a guy's mouth. I saw his lips split and his blood began to dribble down his chin. The other two ran off. Then the big guy who had gone down first got up and the other one got up. They held their heads. The guy with the bloody mouth stood there. Then they retreated down the street together. When they got quite a way down, the big guy turned around and said, we'll be back. Red began running toward them and I ran behind Red. They started running and Red and I stopped chasing them after they turned the corner. We walked back, found a ladder in the garage. We got the football down and we began throwing it back and forth. It was a month or so later that Red's family moved. <clears throat> One day they were gone, just like that. Red never said anything in advance to me. He was gone. The football was gone, and those tiny red fingernails with fingernails on the end were gone. He was a good guy. I miss that guy. Thanks. <laughs>